Hi, we're in uh, week two talking about the Coursera class for machine learning with Andrew Ng, and I'm here again with Thomas Henson. How you doing, Thomas? I'm doing amazing. Yay, that's <laughs> amazing. That's good to know. I saw this interesting tweet about like how Americans like translate, like when we say amazing, what it really means. And it doesn't actually mean amazing. I think it means something like you're doing okay. No, I'm doing pretty good actually. You know, it's, man, we're kicking off 2018. You know, it's a new yep. year, new slate. Um, I mean, you know, we're working our way through the course. We're in week two. That's awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say one of the great things that I learned that was different in week two than I had in week one is I decided to um, take notes like you were doing. So I know that in week one, I had said that I was using Evernote and was trying to uh, use that. But once once we hit week two, there were so many formulas associated with everything and so many things to like write down that it basically just... I just ended up creating a new book that was specifically just for machine learning um, for the Coursera class. And I just kind of like went down that path because I couldn't use Evernote anymore, which which I hate. And I know that they have books that can easily be like moved into Evernote, but I, I haven't, I'm not that, I'm not that far ahead. I think I got all confused during the holidays and I just didn't even think about it. So I'm back to just a regular paper and pen. Okay. So what is the notebook? I have to know because I'm a notebook snob. Like I only use Moleskin. I've tried a couple different other ones that are kind of all right. What yeah. kind of notebook is it? Yeah. Well, so let me just be clear. For work, I use a Moleskin, right? Just plain. And not only like a Moleskin, but here's the book. And I have this really cool um, brass pen. And let's see if you can hear it. Did you hear that? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fancy. And it's like magnetic and it sits and now I can't. So it's like they're a water, like you have to put ink in it. It's like one that uh, no. Benjamin Franklin used. No. Okay. No, no. Yeah. See, did you hear that? Yeah. So it's fun when you're in a meeting and you do that. But um, for this specific class, I had just used um, a book from a conference that was free uh, that you get in your backpack. Um, nothing special, nothing along those lines, but I do agree for work. I use a moleskin. So just so we're clear for all the viewers, Machine learning, Coursera course, not Moleskin worthy. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. True. <laughs> so Please funny. just use a conference pad for this. <laughs> and it's funny because usually I just give them away, but I have also, um, and I don't have um, some of the notes, so hopefully we'll show them for next week's kind of review. But I have, you know, like you get all of those free paper um, notepads for like in the mail with stamp, not with stamps, but with like address labels. Yeah. So yeah, I have a lot of those like free paper notepads and I don't always throw them out cause I'm kind of, they always have my name on them and I always means I have to shred them and not just recycle them. So I've been using that to do all my like paperwork for the actual class for all the quizzes. Um, and that, so th those aren't even conference book worthy. Those are purely free paper worthy. Um, to test out all those questions and answers for the quizzes. But if you're if you're using those, you still have to shred them. So you're still shredding them just Correct. one at a time. So just Correct. for anybody but, that wants to I go through your trash can, just know you're not getting anything. Um, Correct. Erin, with her security background, is uh, very paranoid. Yes, very paranoid. Anything that has my name on it, anything, I try to focus on shredding it. But at least now I feel like... I would take the time because then I would feel bad. Even though everything gets recycled, I have this like, my mind gets a little crazy and I would just shred my part that has a name, not shred the whole paper because I didn't want to fill up my shredder bin. So now it saves me a lot more time. I'm getting more use out of the paper, not just automatically shredding it. I'm using it, then recycling it. And then so we're all good. Okay, so. I feel like a better, better consumer. So now that everybody knows how we're consuming the data, let's <laughs> talk about week two and how we yeah. got to program. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That was exciting. So I use MATLAB, but what did you end up using? I used Octave. So that was the recommendation and kind of some of the tutorials. Yeah. And I ended up doing a blog post for some of the work that I did on MATLAB just because I felt everything that he had actually talked about within the course was not using MATLAB, was using the Octave. And they're the same. I have both of them downloaded um, on my system, but I ended up just using the one really to submit all of those assignments. I use MATLAB myself. So it's good that we have like two different kind of viewpoints on that. Yeah. So I was working on a uh, blog post uh, as well, just because for me, you know, as a programmer, kind of, you know, my background, I thought this week was going to be really fun for me because you get to download a tool, get to play with it. And then there's some, yeah. you know, kind of syntax differences, right? But to me, you know, one of the things I think, and I think you and I talked about this originally offline, but just to the users, uh, viewers know, 
the first thing that hit me about Octave and I'm guessing MATLAB, I've never downloaded both of them, so I'm just Octave uh, straight up. Yep. But uh, do you remember the uh, the calculators we were talking about before? What was it, the TI-83 that I had in high school? Oh, yes. That's exactly yep. what I think of as far as the interface and everything for Octave. Not saying it's a bad interface, but that just yep. kind of flashed me back to that where it's, hey, you know, you, you have to be able to be able to program some stuff in and be able to pull out some uh, linear graphs. So there are some syntax changes there. Um, still some Unix based. So, you know, if you're, if you're familiar with Unix command line, you can still use LS and some of the other things, make sure that you're in the correct directory. But for the most part, it's uh, fairly intuitive, uh, but there are some syntaxes differences that are similar to the TI 83. Whenever yeah. you're just adding, dividing, you know, having, you know, d doing, doing some of these longer equations uh, that you'll find as you go through the course. Yeah, and I definitely love the MATLAB because of the GUI. I just thought it was great. I just brought it up now on my laptop. You know, there's a command window. There's the ability to bring up um, all the individual files. There's a whole current folder kind of path. So I really just like the interface for the um, um, MATLAB, which is just really more conducive to my life and what I was most comfortable with and kind of playing around with it and really – I liked how it was configured. The Octave, it's not even up on my system right now. It's just having, if I recall, it was just the command line and that was about it. Yeah, I think they have a GUI option too um, that I yeah. downloaded. Were you able to, uh, did you, uh, like within MATLAB, can you like edit the file that you're going to submit to? Yeah, yep. so, so you can switch back and forth um, in Octave. So I, I think they're kind of close. Great. So with MATLAB though, is there, I know, I know for this course, are you given like a free temporary license or what's the difference yep. because they're both... So MATLAB, though, yeah. if you were going to use it in a production environment, it's more the paid paid version. So is Correct. this like, it's like, is this like CentOS or CentOS and then uh, Red Hat? I mean, is this kind of what yeah. we're looking at with Octave? And okay. Yeah. So that's why I also thought a couple of people had just mentioned that MATLAB was also used in in their college courses. I didn't use it in my college courses. I'm definitely I'm a lot older than the person that gave me the information. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't even think MATLAB was around back then. And um, so they just said it was using the college and they were more comfortable. And I always feel like when somebody uses it in college, you want, they'll continue to use it in the professional life. So I just thought it was also a great experience to really figure out how to use this product um, if I ever needed it to use it again down the road, um, which was pretty awesome. Yeah. So I love having that experience. So same thing uh, for me. I didn't, I didn't use it in college, but I'd heard about it uh, when I worked. Uh, so I was a defense contractor. And so I worked with a lot of uh, engineers, so aerospace, you know, EE yeah. and uh, MATLAB. They used, they used it a good bit. I don't, I don't know if they had used it in college. So I, I'd heard about it for a while. Um, I just went with Octave because that's what uh, Andrew was using in the tutorials. And, you know, yeah. for me, I was just really trying to, you know, grab something and be able to start uh, plugging away. I, like I said, I liked it. I will say this week I liked better than week one, but it was, I think hard, it was harder once you got out of Octave. So like just for, what do we, what do, we do? The linear regression with multiple variables. Um, this is the first week that uh, after three attempts on the quizzes, I got locked out and had to wait eight hours. So. No. <laughs> Welcome to my so life. still there's math, you know. <laughs> cool you get to play with the tool and then it's like all right submit your work and everything went well I was like, all right and then it's like yeah. oh man more math i didn't yeah i didn't realize actually i knew there would be math involved but <laughs> yeah i definitely was a little bit it was more tedious i thought it was you really need to make sure that you're scheduling your time correctly that you're looking at all of the courses how long each of those individual videos are going to be um, how much the notes make sure that you're looking in all of the sections because sometimes there's there's sections that talk about corrections um, in the class things like that so it's good to kind of prepare yourself because they're definitely getting longer and tedious the first week again you don't know what to expect um, it's all new and then the second week you think you have everything together and then they introduce the programming and then you're you know still running out of time and trying to learn it and doing a lot of google searches uh to figure out some of the individual things that you need to do so it was it was good but it was a it's a tough week yeah so how did you do with the quizzes did you, yeah did, did, did it go pretty well yeah, for you better I, than me <laughs> it was a little bit better than you uh i think yes, again remember, I, folks, I learned my she lesson has an EE and i just have <laughs> my simple old uh, bachelor's and master's in business <laughs> it doesn't matter so does it matter i know and just to be reminded yeah you know how many people are surprised when they meet me and they're like really you're an electrical engineer. I'm like, yeah, I don't, why are people so surprised by that? It happened again yesterday. And I said it to somebody like, no, I'm no, like, I knew. And sure I think the says. users know too. I mean, anytime you see somebody with a biggie, a biggie poster in the background, you know, <laughs> electrical engineer. 
right there. <laughs> He's always looking down on me. I love it. I love it. I hope people, I would be interesting to see people recognize it from week one. It was a little holiday gift uh, that I got myself that I figured I kind of needed it. Um, and I added a little purple. Can you see the purple in my hair? And a little uh, yes. spice up the holidays. Yeah. There you go. Let's mix it up. Lots of color. Lots of color of the holidays. Wait, Biggie's got a purple jacket on. He does. He does. And I love it. That he's got a pigeon and he's wearing um, a necklace that says like Hustle. And I love it. I'm originally from Cincinnati and Charlie Hustle, Pete Rose. So I was like, oh yeah, this is mine. This is so mine. <laughs> I love it. And I sing the, I sing, well, I'm not going to sing for you. I'm going to save everyone. Can we, can we, happy. can we do it uh, week 12? Uh, week 12. Maybe. We do our Maybe. Maybe. All right. So you, Maybe. everybody, you have to tune in. So make sure, first off, make sure you subscribe. It's all right. So you never want to miss one of our updates nope. here or any of the other videos, but special thing, week 12, we might have Aaron C. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. I think maybe should we end on that note of uh, the anticipation? Yeah. Let, uh, let Biggie take us out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for week two. Um, again, it's the machine learning and uh, Andrew Ang course on Coursera. And um, Thomas and I are taking it with a couple of other people, so hopefully they'll start joining us. But luckily, you just have to see our smiling faces these first couple of weeks. And uh, just some just some, just some, different insight into the course and some of the experiences we've had. Uh, again, as we mentioned, I'm an electrical engineer, but I'm an older electrical engineer, and I haven't been in school for some, for some time. Um, so it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. And here, obviously, with Thomas.